dear students today i am going to explain you landforms of the earth let's take a recap last time i explained you about major landforms of the earth on the basis of slope altitude landforms are of three types mountains plateaus and plains one landform i have explained you that is mountain any elevated area more than 900 meter above sea level is known as mountain types of mountain fold mountain block mountain and residual mountain and significance mountain play an important role in our life mountain give birth to rivers mountains are rich in mineral resources etc today i am going to cover these topics first meaning of plateaus types and significance meaning of plains types and significance let's start with plateau what is plateau plateau covers an extensive area with steep slope and flat top if you will compare mountain plain hill so you will find plateau with flat top students you have observed table at your home yes we can compare plateau with table as table is flat at the top in the same way plateau is also flat at the top that's why plateau is also called table land types of plateaus there are three types of plateaus first dissected plateau dissected word means cut or we can say broken down now dissected plateau is a plateau which is cut down by river streams into smaller section see this image in this image i have depicted southern india two times in the above image if you will observe so you will find in the ancient time peninsular plateau was a single landmass and these blue color i have represented rivers here narmada tapi mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri so in ancient time peninsular plateau was one single landmass but over a period of time this peninsular plateau cut down into three major section malwa plateau in the northwest side of the deccan plateau chhota nagpur plateau in the north east side of the deccan plateau and see this triangular shape landform you all are familiar familiar with this landform yes this is called deccan plateau so peninsular plateau was a single landmass in the ancient time but now this landform divided into many plateaus malwa plateau chhota nagpur plateau and deccan plateau but why due to the continuous weathering by rivers like narmada tapi mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri these rivers are responsible for the weathering of peninsular plateau into many parts second type intermontane plateau intermontane plateau means a plateau which is surrounded by a mountain from all side for example tibetan plateau tibetan plateau is surrounded by himalayas kunlun mountain from all side see this image in this image you will observe this is intermontane plateau which is located between two mountain ranges one in the west side and another in the east side so in simple way we can say a plateau which is surrounded by mountain is known as intermontane plateau third volcanic plateau do you know student what is volcano 
volcano means when magma oozes out or coming out from the interior of the earth and when it spread on the earth surface that magma converted into lava so in the same way when magma oozes out or coming out from the fissures what is fissure f i w s u r e s fissure means cracks so when magma coming out from the cracks or fissures on the earth surface and spread over a large area and cools down and form a plateau with flat top and steep slope so in this way volcanic plateaus are formed for example deccan plateau in india significance of plateaus plateaus play important role in our life as we know plateaus are rich in mineral resources and thus mining is an important or main occupation what is mining mining means extraction of minerals from the interior of the earth as we know chota nagpur plateau in india that plateau is rich in mineral resources like coal iron so many minerals are found if plateaus are rich in mineral resources so we can say that plateaus give a favorable ground for the establishment of mineral based industries example iron and steel industry second plateaus are rich in pasture pasture means grasses so grasses are found in abundance in plateau region so these grasses are used for livestock rearing livestock rearing means cow buffalo sheep rearing these are a part of the livestock rearing third as we know volcanic plateaus that is comprises with fertile soil or we can say volcanic plateaus are rich in fertile soil for example deccan plateau deccan plateau is rich in fertile soil so you will find that deccan plateaus were formed due to the volcanic eruption and what kind of rocks are found in deccan plateau yes igneous rock and igneous rock when it weathered down so it converted into black soil so black soil is considered as a fertile soil and that soil is suitable for farming and last you will find when the river fall from the plateaus that forms waterfall and waterfall that play an important role waterfall attract tourists as well as the waterfall by this we can produce hydroelectricity next plain what is plain plain means a flat or a level land is known as plain plain are formed by two forces one is internal forces and second one is external forces you have done already what is internal forces the forces which generate inside the earth surface like earthquake volcanic eruption and external forces like that weathering erosion by wind water ice etc so plains are formed by internal forces and external forces what is the other name of internal forces that is endogenetic forces and external forces exogenetic forces there are two types of plain structural plain and depositional plain what is structural plain see this image you will see this is southern part of india now i am not talking about the peninsular part of india if you will see that toward the west side of peninsular part and toward the east side of the peninsular part of india you will find this is western coastal plain and this is eastern coastal plain so western coastal plain and eastern coastal plain earlier these two plains were submerged land masses what is submerged that is under the water yes 
western and eastern coastal plain earlier these were under the water these land masses were under water but after a period of time due to internal forces like due to volcanic eruption due to earthquake due to internal forces these submerged land masses get uplifted uplifted means that is coming up so due to internal forces these submerged land masses were uplifted and as a result structural planes such as coastal planes were formed for example coastal plains of india next depositional plain as you know what is deposition like when rivers come from the mountain so river bring a lots of sediments sediments means sand silt clay so when wind river ice that bring a lots of sediment from one place and deposit to the another place when deposition takes place so in this way depositional plains are formed there are four types of depositional plain alluvial plain alluvial plains are formed due to the deposition of sediments brought down by river for example indo gangetic plain in india that you all know northern plains of india cover up bihar madhya pradesh drift plain when glaciers bring a lots of sediments and deposited in a particular area in a level or a plain manner in this way drift plains are formed loess plain when wind bring or carry a lots of sediment and deposit in another area in this way loess plains are formed for example loess plain in china next lacustrine plain lacustrine word stands for lake when river bring a lots of sediments and deposited in the lake then that shallow lake or a deep lake get filled after a period of time and it later on it converted into lacustrine plain for example valley of kashmir last significance of plain as you know plain plains are vast level or a flat land which is used to construct roads railways canals airports in the plain area it's easier to construct these you know roads railways canals airport in the plain area so if all the facilities will be available in plain area so it give birth to big cities and if big cities will be there then more employment will be there and you know terrain terrain word stands for land form as we know plains are vast level or a flat land that is also suitable for digging out well and tube well major source of irrigation so with the help of these major irrigation we can flourish our agricultural activities we can grow different kinds of crops if crops will be more then we can establish agro based industries or industry which require raw material from the agriculture sector and last we know depositional plain like we have discussed indo gangetic plain or northern plains are rich in alluvial soil which is brought down by rivers so as alluvial soil is rich fertile soil so that help in agricultural activities thank you students